as we begin just to go over a very quick reminder that when it comes to the adhkar, there are certain adhkar that is prescribed for us in the sunnah. And we have certain periods to do this adhkar. So for example, we have adhkar that comes after the salah. The certain adhkar that we may say, for example, to say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakti ya dhul jalali wal ikram. And there's also a few others which we've gone over. Again, all of the videos are online. And we also have a certain or the, a certain amount of du'as that Rasulullah told us to say every morning and every evening. Again, we've finished with that series. It's all online. Whoever wants to go over it and learn the du'as. And now we get to what's known as Athkarun Nawm. Athkarun Nawm is certain du'as and dhikr that's prescribed for us that we say before we go to sleep. And also there are certain practices to implement in our life when it comes to going to sleep. And so we find that, you know, from all of this, the believer who, you know, who's always trying to be close to Allah, as we know that, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That in the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to his practices, his akhlaq, his sunnah, you know, in this is an example for all of those who aspire to be close to Allah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ الله. Say, if you truly love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ الله. Then try to be like Rasulullah sallallahu as much as you can. Trying to implement the ahadith and the sunnah in your life as much as you can. The more you are able to do so, the closer you will be to Allah. May Allah grant us all closeness to Him. لكم. So Allah will love you in return. And for in those aspects where you have shortcomings. Because us as human beings, we can't always be living as much as we want to in accordance with the sunnah, we always have shortcomings. Allah says, for as long as you make an effort to try and follow the sunnah to the best of your abilities, for that which you fail to do, Allah will forgive you for that. In Allah ghafoor rahim Because indeed, Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful, as long as we can make that effort. And so we find the believer, he's remembering Allah from the moment he wakes up, after his salah, and also in the morning, and in the evening, and also before he goes to sleep. May Allah make us of those who are always remembering him. And so, before we get started on the actual du'as, a few aspects of adab. And some people have asked this question and we may wonder because some people they say that is it a sunnah to face towards the qibla when we sleep? Now, it's not from the sunnah of Rasulullah in itself. However, what we do know is that he said that the Kaaba is your qibla for the living and the dead. And because our sleep is regarded as a minor death, so some people say that because it's a minor death, we should, we should still be facing the qibla when we go to sleep. However, if we are not facing the qibla when we go to sleep, then that is okay. We don't have to be you know, facing the qibla. But what is a sunnah is that we should be facing our right side. So especially when we go to bed then we should try our best to face the right and to go to sleep in that position. We know Rasulullah Sallallahu he used to put his right hand under his cheek. Or sometimes he would stretch out his arm, almost like this you could say. And he would leave his head leaning on his right arm and he would go to sleep like that. May Allah grant us all the ability to follow the sunnah. And so Rasulullah Sallallahu he says, and it's narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an, that when any one of you go to bed, he should shake his bed or shake out his bed with the inside of his waist sheet or his trousers, so to say, for he does not know what has come onto it after him. And so after that he does that, he should say, Bismika Rabbi wa da'atu jambi wa bika arfa'u. In amsakta nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfadu bihi ibadika salihin. This is one of the du'as that we can say when going to sleep. Is, and there's two things we learn from this. The, number one, first let's go over is adab. That before we go to bed, we should try to dust the bed minimum. If we cannot do it with the insides of our izar, then at least with our clothes from the bottom. If you also can't do that, then just to fulfill the sunnah, at least dust the bed a few times with your hand before you then go and sit on the bed, before you start your adhkaru nawm, and then before you go to sleep. Again, may Allah grant us all the ability to do so. So when we get ready to go to bed, just ensure that you dust it to fulfill the sunnah and then you will sit on your bed. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do after that is he used to cup his hands together and then he would recite Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falaq, Surah Nas. He would blow on it and then he would rub his hands across his body, the front starting from the head and as much as his hands or rather his hands could reach of his body. And this is something 
that we should all do, you know, it serves as ruqya for those who are suffering with ayn and with sihr, you know, follow the sunnah practice, follow what Rasulullah told us to do. If we are able to do this on a daily basis, then no sihr and no ayn would ever affect you. Also to recite ayatul kursi before you go to sleep, it protects you from the shayateen whilst you are sleeping. That also is a cure and a protection from nightmares and, you know, sometimes shaytan comes, he makes you oversleep. This is a protection from all of that. And the second part of it is the dua. Now there are many different types of duas that you could be saying when going to sleep. The most common one with that, that we do know is Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya that O oh Allah in your name I die and I live. And so whichever one that you know at this point we should be saying it again before we go to sleep and we will continue with the next duas next week. As for now you know it's just about the practices. Again let's go over a very very quick su summary. When you go to bed dust it a few times and then when you sit cup your hands recite surah ikhlas surah falaq and surah nas and blow over yourself and then you lie on your right hand side and all the duas that you say the sunnah practice is to say it whilst you are facing the right so that's the bare minimum even if you sleep in other you know uh, directions whilst you are saying the duas make sure that you are facing the right and after that fall asleep and the more we can do this we'll find the more barakah we have also in our sleep and the more likely we are to wake up refreshed and ready to have khushur in our salah, in our fajr salah, or even when we wake up for tahajjud, we'll keep it over there. May Allah grant us all the ability to live closely as possible to the sunnah.